Hey there, I'm Nev, I'm a dev, and roughly a year ago I made a video about Svelte and my experience with Svelte and SvelteKit after I think one or two months. Um, yeah, that was pretty much um, exactly one year ago. Things have changed because one thing that I've said there, and this was like really, I think, kind of uneducated because, yeah, I didn't really dive deep into the subject back then. But one thing that I said back then was that I didn't really like or that I thought the ecosystem wasn't really as mature as others, like, for example, React. But yeah, that was a bit of a stupid time because I wasn't really experienced back then and I haven't really dug in too much. And yeah, so today I want to specifically focus on Svelte focused um, packages and libraries and just stuff for Svelte and not stuff like Drizzle. Yeah, just things for Svelte. And yeah, so first of all, there are many creators for Svelte. Um, if you go to Huntabite, I think he's probably maybe one of the biggest um, contributors to um, the Svelte ecosystem. Um, he has done many things um, for the Svelte ecosystem. Yeah, let's first start with the SV with the SV ecosystem, um, which is basically something that he is a contributor, and I think he makes this with two other people, and they make very nice stuff, um, like for example, Ruined uh, or Form Snap. I think Painforge is also pretty nice. Um, so yeah, let's just go over them. Ruined. Uh, let's go to rune.dev. Rune is basically not a wrapper, but like a bunch of utilities for the new Svelte Rune. So if you didn't already know, I probably think you know, but Svelte introduced runes in Svelte 5. And Rune basically gives us um, all of these uh, useful utilities, for example, context, where you can set a context. Um, persisted state is really interesting because let's increment this value. Um, and normally, if we refresh, the state is gone. But if we refresh here, the state is actually still here. And we can actually go ahead and inspect this um, in our storage, I think. Yeah, it's in our local storage. Uh, let's move this over here. Yeah, in our local storage, we have persisted state demo. And we can increment this. And as you can see on the top uh, right here, no, on the top, yeah, on the top right here, we can see the value changing. We can also decrement the value and, of course, also reset the value. So, yeah, persistent state, pretty useful. For example, if you're building something like a card, um, I think uh, we can probably type this as well. Let's see uh, if I can spell this. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can uh, type this um, persistent state object as well. But we have some uh, pretty, like, useful things. Um, for example, previous, like the previous state, something like that, or the state history. And if we go ahead and increment, we can see that we can access the history of the persisted state. That would be useful so for something like undo and the redo button, because now do undo and then I can in increment and I can redo anymore, but now I can. Stuff like this. It's just pretty useful. I've actually, if I'm honest, I've never actually used this in my own project. Um, but... Yeah, I would highly recommend to use that in uh, your project if it's getting more complex. And if I'd be building a new uh, web store or a new e-commerce store with Svelte Kit, I would definitely go ahead and use Rune for that. Yeah. So the second thing we have here is FormSnap, and we're gonna talk about FormSnap just in a second because for FormSnap I need to explain what Superforms is, which we will come to in a second. So Paintforge is another really cool thing, and it basically allows us to have these cool resizable paints. And yeah, that's basically how it is. They are, it seems like, pretty simple. Um, and yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, we can go ahead and have all these paint groups and paint resizers. Uh, I don't know actually how declarative or if this is actually uh, imperative, the syntax. No, it's actually pretty declarative. This is really cool. Um, yeah, pain group, we have our pain group and we set the direction and we set our resizer between these two. Yeah, makes it um, pretty simple to set up, I guess. And then 
Of course, these are their own elements, so you can just put in there whatever you want. Um, so if we go ahead and look at this example code, um, yeah, we just have our pane right here and our closing tag. And in here, we can basically put in what we prefer. But Hunter has also made some other cool stuff. Um, the first being Melt UI, and we will go ahead and look at Bits UI and then Chat Svelte. Sorry for the flashbang, by the way. This website is really bright. Yeah, here you can read a bit about Hunterbyte. Um, big shout out to him. He's not uploading, but I think that's because he's building. Because this is what he is building. Um, this is MeltUI. And MeltUI, I think it's better if you go to the new version. Oh, the new version is not really there. Okay, this is the older version. But I think the new version is underway. Uh, so the Svelte 4 version is that what we are looking at right now. And it's not really a UI library, but it gives us all of these primitives. So if we, for example, um, would go and build a drop down menu like that, um, we would have all of these um, primitives like menu, item, trigger, and arrow. And uh, we could just um, use melt and then item and yeah, it just provides us the necessary primitives and then we can build around them. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, I like this approach, um, but I haven't actually tried it out myself yet. And I don't really know if it's really my style of programming. I, I like to have everything with a bit more layers of abstraction, like for example, with BitUI. BitsUI gives you basically unstyled components like this accordion. I mean, yeah, it is styled in, on this website right here. Theoretically, it is unstyled. You will see that if you import them into your project and you will then have to style it yourself. Next, we have Schatz and Svelte. If we take a look at everything that we just um, covered and we would build like a pyramid with all of these layers, like uh, on the bottom, we have MeltUI and then we have BitsUI and then we have Paintforge and Ruined and Formsnap, which I didn't already talk about. Um, we have Paintforge. And then on top of that is really Schatzian Svelte. So Schatzian Svelte is the Schatzian uh, UI.schatzian.com. This is the original Schatzian, um, but it is unfortunately only for React and I think Next.js, like stuff like that. This is just a Svelte port of it. This is also building on top of these different primitives. So for example, um, if we just have the date picker, this is just built on top of the um, date picker that we have here. So let's scroll down a bit. Yeah, this is just building on top of this date picker right here, or it's pretty similar to that one at least. Um, but if we so have something like a resizable, where do we have it resizable? Right here. Um, and then we scroll down a bit. Yeah. I think this is really, yeah, I think you've already seen that. This is just the pain forge thing um, from Svico system. And if you just go ahead, I know to Sonner, um, it's also saying here that we have, yeah, the Sonner component is provided by Svelte Sonner, um, which is also another library. And there are, again, sorry for the flashbang, I didn't know that. Again, Sonner is just like a little port of um, Sonner for Svelte. He just put Sonner inside of Shatzian because why build it yourself when you just can import the primitives from somewhere like Svelte Sonner and then just build on top of the primitives. Yeah, I'm a big Shatzian Svelte fan. First, I was a bit skeptic, but now I'm a big fanboy, I would already say. Um, I've already made a video why I adopted Chats in Svelte. Um, it's my latest video, I think, from last Sunday. So go ahead and check that out. I will link it probably here or here. Um, yeah, somewhere up there. Yeah, they have something called or they have theming. Um, but I think it's a bit it's a bit boring. I don't know. There are not many colors to choose from. You can change the border radius a bit, but not nothing too crazy, unfortunately. But maybe we will get there soon because maybe I'm also a bit spoiled. I think I already said this in the other um, video, but maybe I'm a bit spoiled by the Daisy Y theme generator. We can actually, yeah, 
tweak many things in our theme. But now I think we can finally talk about form snap. Uh, no, actually, not yet. First, we need to talk about super forms. This is super forms, and it is a SvelteKit form library that brings you a comprehensive solution for server and client form validation. It supports a multitude of validation libraries. I just went with Zod all the way. I don't know. So this is the first thing I knew, but maybe I will try something else in the future. So yeah, Superforms is just um, a forms library that I've basically used in every of my projects. I've used it in Zenith. I'm using it in my project that I'm currently building. I have um, used it with Codoodle and all of these things. So I've used it with pretty much um, every project that, I've building, that I'm building in Svelkit. Um, because yeah, form handling in Svelkit is already pretty cool. Um, but Superforms gives it this extra nice touch um, that there is not in Svelkit itself, in vanilla Svelkit, as I would call it. So yeah, it just the quality of the developer experience um, for making forms is just significantly better with Superforms. And on top of Superforms, um, Huntabyte built a thing called FormSnap. And FormSnap, if you were to build a uh, Superforms only um, form, you would have to write all of these junk. Um, like, let's kind of analyze what we have here. Uh, we just have a form and we are enhancing it progressively. And we have our input. We need to set our ARIA labels are, are required. Then we need to specify our errors, our error fields and do all of these ternaries and stuff because error handling in Svelte Superform is the, in Superforms is the only thing that I, I'm not really a fan of yet. I think this could uh, seek some improvements. Um, but yeah, here we have Superforms plus Form Snap. And as you can see, I think maybe this all fits in one uh, view, the whole form. No, it does not. But if we go ahead and zoom out a bit, yeah. And the way that it works here is that we are specifying our field here. We are passing in the form. And this name property is actually type safe. So, um, yeah, we are checking for maybe, uh, yeah, we're checking for name, email, and password. So we could not put in username here, for example. And in our props, we are passing all of our props to our input. Um, so this also can't be um, kind of wrong because everything is type safe. Um, we are applying a label here. I've actually, I've never used FormSnap um, before I've used um, Shatian Svelte because Shatian Svelte also wraps around, wraps its forms around FormSnap and Superforms and its own input stuff. But um, now I'm seriously considering it, using it more um, because it just takes away all of this crap that I... I'm repeating myself every time I am building a new application with um, Superforms. And I I think it's completely necessary, right? I don't want to have an inaccessible form or just a shit form. So, um, but just to make my um, development easier, I just want to use FormSnap. Um, I don't think we need to really talk about these. I mean, yeah, we have BitCY select. This could actually be interesting. Um, I'm going to put this into uh, favorites. I think you've probably heard about 3JS. It's this way to build 3D apps for the web. Um, for example, with React, but you can also use it for vanilla JavaScript. I think the library is actually designed for vanilla JavaScript, but there have been uh, people who kind of built wrappers around it to be um, for it to be more declarative and use it in React. And there's also something for Svelte, um, which is the RELT. Um, let me tell you, uh, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with 3D because yes, I would absolutely love to build something with 3D, but at the same time, I'm like way too lazy because yeah, mate, I've gone through some Blender tutorials and modeled some stuff myself. I once made a Macintosh model, which I was really proud of. Um, but then like implementing it in the web is then another story. So yeah, I was never really a huge fan, but like this just looks, I mean, this looks pretty clean. Yeah, they have certain things in their package 
Um, where do we have it? Yeah, let's just go to documentation. Um, they have Threlt Core, which is provides the primitives, the main building block for any Thread application. Um, they have some plugins. They have extras. GLTF to import your models that you've actually made yourself. Theater to make some animations. And XR. XR if you want to make uh, like VR or AR applications. Um, Flex and uh, Rapier for physics. Um, yeah. I respect the people who know 3D in the web, but for me, it's not really... I'm a bit too lazy to learn it, but maybe, maybe in the future I will go, I will go ahead and learn that. So yeah, this is Threlt. And one of the things that I've actually also discovered recently, um, that I was very interested in was the Svelte flow. So if we go ahead and search for Svelte flow, we see this, um, thing right here, um, which is called Svelte flow. And it's by a team called XY flow. So we go to XY flow. Um, they have these kind of um, yeah wire your ideas with XY flow. It's basically a customizable Svelte component for building node based editors and interactive diagrams. So, like as you can see, we can go ahead and edit everything in here. We can choose the type pyramid. We can go ahead and zoom in and out. We can change the color of these to be like I don't know pink, for example. It's just, it's very cool. We have these um, node-based um, things. Um, I don't really have a use case for that yet, but maybe I will use it in the future. Um, like something like a minimap is just super useful, right? It really reminds me of something like Miro, the Miro board. Um, and I could see myself building something like this myself, especially with this um, library. Could be, could be an adventure, right? These were kind of the libraries that I use myself or that I just find very interesting that there are for Svelte. And yes, I was kind of wrong. Svelte ecosystem is actually not immature at all. It has some pretty cool uh, things. And yeah, I think the best way is just to try it out and then look for yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out any future videos go ahead and activate the notification bell and we will see us in the next one bye